everybody, welcome to the Double Stuff Podcast, where we are double the host, double the topics, and double the fun. I am Sarah. I'm Alan. I'm Dan. I'm Charity. All right. Now, let's get down to brass tacks. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be serious. serious. Rolling up the sleeves. It is. No. It is. Serious business up in I her. I bet you all wonder why Take I brought you all here today. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I did it. <laughs> Are you going to sit us down and explain how the murder was done? It is. I, I do like that in old movies. It's like they bring them all it's to have dinner. It's a classic dinner. Miss Absolutely. Marple ending. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're like, they're like the one of you killed mr smith <gasps> and they all look at you i'm like what what and then, and then they break it all down it's like well she couldn't have done it because she did that but you were nowhere to be found and then you see the guy sneaking up this gun all right all right i did it he waits for the whole explanation he before he tries to take him out i'm like just shoot him while they're paying attention to Ms. <laughs> yeah. and, and then behind behind him they're able to you know get, get the gun away and they're like well, another day, another detective story. <laughs> <laughs> Book him, <'em, So>, Dano. <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, I hope our topic will be just as riveting as that murder that we just somehow solved. <laughs> so when we were first starting this podcast, one of the titles we were going to use before we chose Double Stuff was something dealing with social introverts, mm. which is what I think that... Well, I, I started calling myself a social introvert because... You know, the definition of, you know, people always, you know, the, the, the closed recluse who doesn't like to be in front of the public eye and stuff. Social but distancing? Y- yeah, but... Bef- but one who enjoys social distancing? But before that was a trend. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like, the socialness to it, because I am in the public eye more and I'm actually doing public appearances and speeches and screenings, I'm having to be more social with people. I'm having to talk in front of, no exaggeration, but, like, two, three, four hundred people. I've seen you do it. You do it very well. Of course I do it very well. Thank you, Alan, for verifying something I already knew. <laughs> it's legit. She's legit. Really good Get that head shrunk back down the sides. <laughs> Actually, that's another part, though. Like, I never used to be this open and be this, you know, be like, yes, I am good. But not, not in an arrogant way, but I, just in a fact I that will say, as someone that grew up with you... When you went to college and then came back for break, it was a totally different person. Because Sarah, you know, she didn't have a lot of friends growing up, so she was more of the shy wallflower, like, kept to herself. Um, Mm -hmm. Not by choice, but that's just what she did. She went to college, and all of a sudden, like came out of her shell she came back and she was loud and (laughs) laughing and making (laughs) stupid pun jokes and i'm like who are you what 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 happened what did college do to you i mean the cool (laughs) thing about the one of the few good things that happened to college was that i was actually accepted because i was like oh man there's people just like me Mm -hmm. and i wouldn't you know because in in high school and elementary school that rite of passage known as education um you know you usually do seem to be the only one in a crowd well, i think what happens in college you get around you know because you you're with people who are majoring in the same stuff as you so you're already yeah they're, they're just as crazy as you yeah. Are. yeah you're already forcing a group of people that like the same things as you versus high school you have to like swim upstream and find a friend yeah, yeah. well and the thing is is that i mean even though i am more outspoken and you know do stuff like that i mean i still do still do consider myself an introvert because in any normal situations i'm still cool with being by myself Mm -hmm. um when i'm at the store like in case like if there's somebody out you know how we go to the store and have people that are handing out samples i try to avoid that whenever possible really i try i I, don't make eye contact it's like when you go to the mall and there's the middle kiosk all down the hallway you're just like Oh, look at the walls. Uh, or, Everything's so exciting. Or oh, I when will. they're trying to, hey, look, yeah. what about a cell phone plan? Yeah. Or, yeah. And you hey, just can like, I shine your shoes? And you're yeah. like, don't talk to me. Get away. That, I'm not here. That yeah. or I will t- seriously go the other direction, take the long route. Oh. So that way I can not only You'll do I have inconvenience to. inconvenience your oh. life. Because I feel, because I'm like, I, I don't want. She don't, you don't want to seem rude. Yeah, I, when I was a kid, really? when I was a kid, I was like, "Ooh, food," because I'm hungry all the time. Yes, I'll take a sample. Actually, I'll take three or four. And then when I got older, I'm like, I, I don't want to be confronted. See, I don't do that <laughs> because I don't. I, most of the samples are not for me. But yeah. I always smile and say hi to the people that are there because yeah. I, I had heard once somebody was talking about it and they said how just kind of lonely it is. Oh, I'm sure that yeah. you're yeah. sitting there and your job is to sort of just hand out this food, right? And you get people that are, but most people just yeah. ignore you, like they walk past you, like you're yeah. not even there. If if terrible. if I ha- if yeah. I do have to like walk, I I will acknowledge. Dang. I'm not I'm not just Brought gonna. Down, yeah, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 not just gonna be like ignoring their existence. So I will smile, say hello yeah. or something. But 
if any way that I can't avoid it. See, I don't go the other way. I smile and I say no, thank you politely, like so manners. It's, it's still it's still hard to say. It's still hard to say no sometimes. <laughs> though. I ain't gonna go no, walk thank you. walk around I three aisles. Said, no, I think you should be like, hey, do you want this piece of brisket? No, no, no. Thank no. You. no. How about this cheese on a cracker? Can I have the cracker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, can, can you scrape the cheese off yeah. of it? Yeah. <laughs> well, and and I guess that still shows that. Uh, and I guess that's one of the definitions of something called like an ambivert, which apparently is a mixture. So like ambidextrous? I guess so. Yeah. It, it's both, ten, it's, I mean, it's both introvert and, mm-hmm. and extroverted tendencies, whatever that means. Uh, I always You're have just a... just equal half of both. I think there's only like a few true extroverts, like people that, that even appear very comfortable and confident. It's I think for a lot of people, it's a learned skill. I was forced to engage it uh, when I became a teacher and I was in front of a group of 50 people, sometimes even older than me Mm -hmm. that assumed that I knew more than them. And so I immediately had to learn how, and the first year of teaching as my wife can confirm was absolutely stressful. I would stay up at all hours of the night struggling over my lesson plans because I, I I had this (laughs) weird idea that I had to have every single answer if it was ever asked. Yeah. And then only after years of it did I realize it's okay not to know everything. It's okay not to be the person that the other person expects all the time. Sure. But recognize it. And then if, uh, if it becomes like, like you're talking about like a, a conflict, yeah. um, then just try to work it out. See, I think that's interesting because a lot I of people like it's a yeah. little different. Um, you're talking about how like you didn't know if you could necessarily get up there, but you had to get up there. So like you're, it's more it was my job. To get up there, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I always felt like introvert and extrovert is where you draw energy from. Oh. So people who yeah. are introverted typically will draw like they'll be rejuvenated or they'll be energized by being by themselves or doing mm-hmm. things like reading. Whereas being in social situations drains them. Yeah. Whereas extroverts yeah. get energized by being in social situations. Uh, yeah, they get yeah, sort yeah. of antsy and you know like lose a lot of energy when they're by themselves. Well, yeah. going off yeah. of what you were saying, Alan, I feel like that's also different too because when i'm thinking of you know introvert extrovert being social i'm thinking more of like an entertainment relaxed setting versus you if you're and if you're doing a presentation for a job or if you're a teacher you're in charge and there's only it's not back and forth like you know they talk you talk you know you are talking you are in charge now they can ask questions but you are in charge of the situation and that's you being a more professional side versus yeah. you being at a, a, a wedding at the reception and you're you know dancing with someone or if you're you know talking to someone at a party i feel like that's different than a more professional setting like it's hard to get out of your head in that those situations well i mean if if you're up in front of someone teaching you have had the opportunity to pre-plan your lesson so you know what you're going to say you've got slides going you've got stuff going versus when you're at a party you're having to think off the cuff cuff, and and talk Mm -hmm. and share stories i don't know if it's the same or and here's my reason being that. prepared versus unprepared well you can prepare as much as you want but eventually you're going to have to take that step you're going to have to get out onto the dance floor you're going to have to and even when i felt like i was as prepared as i could be i was still up in front of everybody worrying about the pimple that popped up on my cheek <laughs> the night before uh, or yeah. that i'm overweight or that you know my clothes aren't fitting right or something all of those anxieties get amplified in mm-hmm. any sort of a stressful that situation makes sense. And, it, and I do think, at least for me, it took years of forcing myself to do that over and over and over and over again yeah. to where I don't even care anymore. <laughs> and, and the reason why I think that I don't care uh, isn't that because I became an extrovert. I still don't think I'm an extrovert yeah. because I'm quite like you, Sarah. I am 100 percent to the annoyance of my family sometimes, 100 percent totally OK with being alone. Oh, yeah. For hours and hours uh, <laughs> at a time. Oh, yeah. um, and and I struggle with that. I do. But as far as as being comfortable around people and being able to put the thing that I uh, at least the trick that I realized is everybody's just like me or most people are just like me. And mm. they're worried about the pimple on their cheek mm. and they're worried about their 
Um, is that why you're supposed to imagine line. them in their underwear? Like Could that be. old trick? I think, it, I, I I think never that's tried a, a that metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly because I don't want to see people in their underwear. I don't think it's I, meant I, to be taken literally, yeah, though. But I, but see, I'm, I'm, I, my you. mind yeah. thinks comedically literal. <laughs> so either either I'm going to imagine them in those white boxes with the hearts printed on yeah, them, like yeah. you see yeah. on cartoons, yep. or something worse. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. Because when I was when I was told that metaphor, you know, I'm like a little pervy 13-year-old, and I'm like, I already look at everybody. <laughs> I'm already imagining them in their underwear. You what, know? what? 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 Done. My... Next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Next. <laughs> that didn't help. That made the situation worse. No, I but, need to go. No, what, what? What I do? I actually, I've again, I've come a long way because even though I have been able to be more in the public eye, sometimes I do still struggle with eye contact. Sure. Yeah. E- even when I am, whether it's one on one or with a few hundred people. Mm-hmm. So what's helped me, which is kind of what my parents do when they have to talk. They, it's good, like if you talk uh, slightly above their heads. Yep. Look past no, them. no, because you can tell that you're supposed to look at the bridge of their nose. That's that way, it looks like you're making public eye contact. Public speaking trick, though, when you're the in a big crowd, trick, you look yeah. above the audience. But oh. I will say, I, honestly, I've actually found it difficult. I'm better off looking at them eye to eye. Yes, absolutely. I actually end up looking at people eye to eye now, and I never would have done that a few years ago. The the fact I'm doing a podcast now shows how far I've come. <laughs> oh, here's okay. if you met me ten years ago. Yeah. No way. This would not have happened. This was yeah. in your bag. I, I mean, I would have been. I would have talked. I would have been like, oh, you well, would have been Sarah? the wallflower, and it would have been three of us talking. But Sarah's in the pictures. Or, or yeah. I, I would do like you can't do an audio and nod. Yeah. Yeah, like, what's with Sarah? Yeah. <laughs> well, no one, no one can, no one can hear a nod. Here's, <laughs> here's a fun confidence confidence game. booster. Yeah. Well, it's just a game. Yeah. Um, it's a game of chicken, and anybody can play it, and we all play it actually all the time. Okay. But. Not a lot of us play it well, but and I don't play it that well either. But when I'm when I'm thinking about it, um, I'm like, okay, t- this is going to be the ride that I'm playing chicken. Whenever you come to a stop, pull up to the window of the car opposite and look over and just stare at the driver <laughs> and, and see who's because it that is that I do not do. That's yeah. how you get shot, Alan. No, no, because <laughs> all right, okay, here's the here's the trick. So if they blink first and look away, yeah, yeah. you've won. <laughs> you've won. You, what do you, they you, they you will not the look back. What's that? <laughs> you win the grape No, no, no. Here's, here's a trick. You so ain't get honking at when the light turns green. I was going to say, so, yeah, that okay, you're the people you that it, take forever to go when the light turns green. It's <laughs> your fault. That's not me. That's not me. Remember, I worked at a racetrack. I've seen the, the, the light tree before. <laughs> I'm always first to accelerate. I'm always I'm always timing Jack out. Per- yeah, yeah, I'm the first off the line. But... Uh, but here's, so here's the trick. So if you run into somebody else that's playing the game too, or an alpha or whatever, then all you got to do is just, you know, go, (laughs) and and, and they'll bleep. They I have bleak. never oh heard gosh. of this game. I've played some I've weird games. I've never heard it either, but I'm just telling you, it will give you a rush of confidence for the rest of your day. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. I don't know if will confidence will be on would top be. of your game. <laughs> okay, but I think it's different if a female <laughs> plays it than if a male plays yeah, it. Yeah, that's if a, a good point. If I do that I'm and not, I'm looking at a guy like, mm, you know, <laughs> I'm not terrorizing females. <laughs> I'm gonna oh, get okay. followed home. I should, I should <laughs> like, have set up this with rules. There's really no rules, but there is a rule. <laughs> Again. It's, you cannot harass people. <laughs> It's so I'm just so looking. I see. I'm too busy jamming out in my car when I'm at a stop. I'm just like, you know, rocking <laughs> out and stuff. And I'm just giving people a show, you know, like okay. when they're watching. Okay, let me ask you this though: Are are you the type that um, will be jamming out as you're going? But when you come to a stop and your windows are down, the, do you continue to let the music? Yeah, yeah. Ride. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, okay, and look for, around. First to off, see I do not have a good sound system okay. in my car. So, <laughs> okay. so like somebody whispering in the car next to me could probably overpower whatever's playing on my speakers. But uh, yeah, no, I, I totally just let it ride. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, sometimes, depending on the song, I might not keep jamming. But uh, <laughs> yeah. speaking of jam, there's only certain types of songs you can jam to. Because uh, <laughs> one time I was picking up charity from school. Oh, so <laughs> embarrassing! I'm 14 years old at this I'm, point. I am jamming to some 1920s. Nice. <laughs> it's some like flapper music, and it's the old music because you can hear the little crackles in it. Oh, like it's some oh 1920s God. Charleston music, a song called Bedelia, <laughs> and it is so loud. In my mom's minivan, and they're coming to pick. And I'm like, up and, I want to steal and ya. everybody's like 
is that you right? I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> let it go. But who are th- and I'm the only black person at my school, so obviously it's my right. I'm literally, I'm like, Charity, come to me. You know, yeah, and I take, time. I take that Bring walk of shame into the I mean, flapper music. Seriously, how many people are going to be jamming to some 1920s music? <laughs> just you. <laughs> See, that doesn't sound buddy. very extrovert. extrovert. Oh, that's, that's, that's the thing. Extrovert. That's so, the thing. Like, like I've slowly started to yeah. huh? emerge or whatever. And a lot of that, I mean, and. I don't know if you guys have. Uh, we guys were in college. Do you take some of those like personality tests? The Myers Briggs. Sure. I don't know if it was it Myers Briggs. It was. It took like thirty minutes to do. It was a really, really like long. I think the yeah. Well, there's that one. What's yeah. the one that's like phlegmatic, sanguine, choleric? Oh my and, gosh. Um, melancholy yeah. or whatever. I, I think it's the Clifton Strength class. test, but I don't think any of those were on. Uh, well, I took both of them. Those are all smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling introverted right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stare at all of you in your eyes. Is it is it introverted or intimidated? There's a Difference. They both See, have an end. So, so, so this is actually a hard thing that <laughs> I've had words. to do to overcome. <laughs> is that um, I consider myself kind of introverted in just the sense that I was talking about. Whereas I, I'm rejuvenated. Yeah. Well, I'm you have to be myself. as a master control operator. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm back yeah. to myself all the time for sure. <laughs> but uh, when I'm in social situations, what I've tended to start doing, and it, for maybe a detriment as well, is um, I, I I like to listen. Mm-hmm. more than I like to participate. Yeah, same. Uh, because same. I like to learn. I like to listen to what people are saying. I don't mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think that my opinion has to be sort of like the front and center thing. It's a refreshing yeah. quality to it, have. I, I really like it. It's not a good quality for a podcast. I was going oh, to say, yeah. I, was, I was just going to say that I was like, it, only in a podcast where that wouldn't work. But yeah, yeah it doesn't work yeah. very well. You're just like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's doing that head nod that nobody can hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but see, that's the thing too. Cause, that's why I added the mumbles. Because <laughs> in social circles, I'm like that too. Or like, it, it depends on what kind of party or in, or something is going on because if it's something that I'm like, oh, I can, okay, I can totally, you know, walk into a group that I don't know and do a quick introduction, do some corny joke and get in. Mm-hmm. Or and a lot of times I still do the whole kind of sit in the corner, wait for someone to come not to, come mm-hmm. to me. Don't be shy, they say. Come yeah. and join the Which group. Which makes it you know? terrible because when they say that all eyes are on you oh, in the room yeah. and you just want to <laughs> get smaller and smaller. No, it's, it's true. And, and there's actually been some places I've gone to, I look and I'm like, nope. And I turn around, <laughs> and, I turn around and leave. And I, I try, like, especially when it comes to like networking things, mm-hmm. like I try to go to uh, lectures or mixers or something to kind of do some networking and I try I, I do a few of those I'm able to s- say one or two things but after a while I'm like why am I really here yeah. well that's almost like being in high school because I would yeah, say I, I would yeah. say I'm an extrovert with limitations so like yeah. in a group of about five or six I can be loud and obnoxious and make funny jokes and be the life yeah. of the party the bigger that group gets the smaller I become mm. and then I will be close to like you know playing on my phone in the corner so like big church functions you know there's like a big young adults group that i went to i was sitting in the corner because yeah. i didn't know anybody and mm-hmm. it was sort of intimidating you just, just sit awkwardly until yeah and it's you, time to go home. you don't know what to do but you know going back to what you said like being in front of people and stuff if i'm in front of people if i'm giving a presentation or something there could be a thousand people in the room because i'm in control of that situation mm. yes yeah, i don't care like i i don't feel like the girl who's in the corner playing on her okay. phone like I'm in control. I've got the mm-hmm. presentation. I'm giving you information. I can look you in the eye and do a presentation, and yeah. there'll be a ton of people in the room. I don't care. So that that's no, sort of my that's interesting. Yeah. But you but you you can't transfer that into other situations. No, because uh, I'm not I, in control in that situation. Yeah. So if I'm at a party, I think that's, that's I can't the big control thing is, is it. I control. have to figure out. Okay, is this is this person nice? Do they like the same things I do? What if I don't know how to talk? Like if you guys start talking about Star Wars or something, yeah. I'll creep back in the corner yeah, because cause we don't know much yeah about i don't know that. star wars i don't necessarily like that sort of genre yeah. and so i i would be playing on my phone if you guys were to have a conversation like that's how i roll so i'm Is yeah why you were on your phone rude gosh uh, they, <laughs> you told my secret guys <laughs> the <laughs> listeners didn't know it was on my phone well uh, only going back to like the random personality test we took because i think the introversion extroversion plays a part in it when I was taking those personality tests, there was one part I didn't fully agree with when I was filling out all those. They're not supposed to be 100% accurate. They I mean, never a, are. A lot of it was kind of spot on, but when they started adding stuff about like um, like heroic situation, we're in a situation like the, a house is on fire, mm-hmm. you know, uh, is it, what would your first initial reaction be? Would you run? Just, run, not, not do anything? Be burned? Or, or would you call 911 or would you run to the building and save somebody? Uh. Uh, another question, which I thought was random, like, 
if you were in a situation where you had to deliver a baby, would mm-hmm. you do that or would you just walk away and be like, uh, you sorry. Know oh, is it's this really like the Good Samaritan test? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Good no, Samaritan. It yeah. You it was, would be uh, surprised at the things that you would do when you're actually in those situations. That's yeah. what I'm and saying. Yeah. Thought experiment. That's what I'm saying because it's like, it, it's in the moment. You can't mm-hmm. be like, well, in it, I wouldn't just, you know, it, it's, it's that you do it in a moment. So yeah. I, I I didn't fully agree with those questions. Yeah, the good Samaritan. Well, I think they don't give was, you enough options because it in those situations are not necessarily either or. It's like, would you walk away or would you help deliver the baby? It's like, actually, I would call 911 and stay there with the woman until medical help comes. You know, that's not an option. Sure. You don't just yeah. get to play either or, and that's not but an accurate fair, That test. is actually helping to deliver. I mean, if that's you're the helping, case that you're but you're doing. not you're not yeah. saying, I'm going to deliver this baby you myself. Your hand in there now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I will help until real real help comes but well, you have to make sure yeah. help comes of course. Yeah. well the idea behind it is like what if the samaritan didn't stop but was affected right. and and said well i'm not going to help out this man but i'm going to um uh, i'm going to go home and donate to a society that could help sure. or something like mm-hmm. that so I, it's just interesting because I've had a real yeah. roller coaster. I mean, I, I was bullied uh, when I was in middle school and earlier mm-hmm. just terribly because I was kind of a I wasn't really the new kid, but I didn't grow up. I was in a small town. Everybody knew each other and I wasn't from that town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. I got into high school, I kind of made the decision of like, you know, I like the things that I like. I like the person that I am. Yeah. And I did that and I became very social. I mm-hmm. had a big group of friends. We all oh, did nice. the things that we like to do. I would like float between the different groups and stuff like that. And then I got into uh, to college and I sort of, I continued that trend, but I started pulling back a little bit. So uh, I did, so I started as an EMT and I'm not sure if I've talked about this before, but it's, it's fascinating. Uh, the things that you don't think that you're capable of doing when you're put in a situation like that. And for me, it was my job, obviously. And, and I had you some had training, training so that gives I you confidence. I did have some training, yeah, and that definitely did, but... I didn't realize how different the training would be uh, when you're like in a room studying in a book or something like that. Yeah, compared right. to knowledge. Real yeah. Right. Um, so I, I just, you know, those personality tests and stuff like that, I think they're fine. I think they're great. I like thought experiments, but sometimes mm-hmm. I think you, I think you surprise yourself a lot more often in real life and stuff like that. Comes it's up. true. I mean, I've done stuff that I didn't think. I mean, like I said, doing this podcast, yeah. I totally is something that I've talked about, but I didn't think I would actually be doing it well i think that's that's what separates what a, a lot of people from mm-hmm. innovators well the, the execution every, well no everybody can critique anything as far as it being good or bad or i could do that or i could uh, yeah you could do anything what can you yeah. do and how mm-hmm. effective are you at accomplishing those dreams and that's my that was the thing that i kept talking to students over you should be running toward the, as long as you keep your your ship going forward it's going forward it's when it starts to wander or turn around that's when you get into trouble mm-hmm. yeah. when you start to give up when you start to um, uh, think about a different project because you're willing to, to leave the course that you're on just keep plowing forward and things will have you are going to reach an island you are going mm-hmm. to reach a promised land as long as you keep going forward and this, Sarah if you keep, <laughs> you just keep plowing ahead it's going to be great well, before um, before wrapping up, I know Dan asked sorry, a question. Let me get off my no, no, you're so good. Box there. Dan asked a question earlier about where you get your energy from. You know, extroverts get their energy yeah. from being around people. Introverts need the time to rejuvenate. So, like, did everyone kind of say where they get that energy from? About oh, where we get it? Yeah. Um, honestly, I the way the way I do my recuperation, I'm either sitting around watching YouTube videos or what I really like to do is I like watching tutorials. I watch a lot of tutorials on how to <laughs> use, I know. I've been doing that since college. So you, you get your rejuvenation like? By, by actually watching tutorials and actually designing something. So it's like the watching someone do it and the actual So you creating. have to be working. You don't have to sit and do nothing. Like you can be involved in a project. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm probably, re- it's weird. I feel like I'm relaxing when I'm doing creative work. So like I'm relaxing by working mm-hmm. in a matter mm-hmm. of speaking. Cause I used to do that when I was at school, I would spend all this work doing stuff in Photoshop, blah, blah, blah. And then I would oh, go I'm back. Oh, relax. And then get on Photoshop. Yeah, exactly, that's <laughs> what I would do. Because I'm like, well, I'm doing my own thing using this program. So I would the, the I stress actually. stress of it is off at that point. You know what's, okay. Get up around four or five a.m. That's what I do most of my video editing. All day. Yeah, when when the <laughs> well, yeah, I know you have to, but like, you know, as it's still quiet, the sun's coming up. 
Photoshop at 5 a.m. Yeah. is so soothing. <laughs> Photoshop at 5, that sounds like a song, like a... Sure. Photoshop at 5. Wait, hold on, yeah, I got that one. <laughs> Photoshop 5, all the time. Oh no! Is that <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the second verse. <laughs> really, yeah. That's like that's like a jingle. Photoshop at five. I so heard. I remember as a very young man or a young boy. I, I somewhere it, it was a long time ago. I watched an interview with Kenny Rogers, and he said that he f- had found the secret to happiness. And I don't know if he came up with this or if he it was an iteration of something he had heard. But as long as you have someone to love something to do and something to look forward to you'll be happy Mm -hmm. and the older i get i there's so much truth to that too so as long as i'm doing something and have something to look forward to and have somebody to love i mean it it the looking forward to is a big one yeah yeah Yeah. but and it kind of plays in i mean before you know i i had found a lifelong partner before i had figured out exactly what it is that i wanted to do Mm -hmm. And before I kind of uh, knew what projects to, uh, I mean, I, I was kind of unhappy. So I, don't know. I will say that, you know, again, I always come back to this just because it's, we're currently doing a series, sure. but I, I don't know if I can really tell you how much I look forward to doing this. Oh, me too. Because, <laughs> right, you know, currently I'm in a situation where it's not very good and this is a bit of sanity for me. Sure. And <clears throat> so I, I enjoy doing this. Um, it also lets out a bit of stress, you know, mm-hmm. and I always want to do something that'll make me laugh because laughter is like medicine. So mm-hmm. I try to administer <laughs> that every day. All right. Well, guys, hopefully enjoyed us talking about how either introverted or extroverted we are. And if you fall into one of those only two categories that apparently exist, uh, send us some wonderful social media stuff and maybe we can talk about it in a f- future episode. So thanks so much, guys. Thanks for listening to today's episode. You can find other episodes on doublestuffpod.com or on your favorite podcast apps. You can also participate in the fun on social media on Facebook and Instagram at Double Stuff Podcast and on Twitter at Double Stuff P, as in the letter P.